Hello everyone, my name is David Postansky of Extreme.TV and welcome to this review of the DIY Funko Pop Mail where you customise the Funko Pop. Okay, let's open up the Funko Pop and here we see there it is in the packaging. Luckily you can take it out and have a look at it. So let's see what we've got going on here. There we see the figuring, it's completely blank. The head doesn't seem to move uh, on the feet. It says some copyright thing, but there we see the head doesn't move. Let's see what else we've got over here. There's Bret Hart. You see the head on that figure does move, but this one doesn't. I don't want to risk breaking it, but yeah, there we see it's not moving. Not going to risk the it. The nose so. is like the little Stewie Griffin nose there. It's like a little triangle. The head is this kind of square shape, so that's going to be interesting to create my baseball cap for it. And yeah, like the ears are what they are, and the figure will soon become me. Okay, now let's show you what I actually did to make the finished thing. So I had DAS modeling clay and then these wooden tools just to roll out and prod and shape and poke into the clay to form it into different shapes. My aim here was to create a t-shirt and then with an open shirt over the top of it just because it's what I will often wear when I'm doing shows. Now, I was using even scissors to cut bits out and to get it into the right shape. If you really wanted to, you could look up a pattern of like a shirt or something and then cut out those shapes, having rolled things out, and that might be an easy way to get the shapes looking correctly for when you're making clothes. Here I was working on the baseball cap and I did actually look up a pattern of how you would make a baseball cap in real life. I found with the peak of the cap that I didn't want to risk it just snapping off or like losing its shape as it was drying so I got a bit of card. I got a piece of card and put in it and then as you can see I moulded the the peak of the cap and then the other parts of the cap, the different segments around this. I put some hair onto the blank Funko Pop just so then I could easily attach and get the right shape because a Funko Pop's head is not round shaped like a person's head is. It's a little bit more squared off. So I did have the fear that if it's not round then perhaps the hat won't fit or look correct or the right shape. So putting some hair on just allowed me to round things up ever so slightly. After 24 hours the clay dried and it's good that it air dries. But here you can see that I'm starting to paint up the dry clay and also just onto the blank Funko Pop. I gave it flesh tone which was close to my own, similar to that on the Bret Hart Funko Pop that you will have seen there. And then I painted the black onto the baseball cap and it can be quite fiddly when you're doing the painting that you can like under the neck you can as you're painting like the flesh tone or the t-shirt you can suddenly find that you've got a big uh, smudge of like the t-shirt color in this case it was black that went onto the chin and then when I try to paint over it with the flesh tone then that goes onto the t-shirt uh, if you slot a piece of paper in you can use that as a barrier not that you could see it on the sped up video uh, the Funko Pop character eyes are just like these big black bug eyes and even though I feel like, oh, well, I've got blue eyes or something like this, I didn't do that. Here I've given myself my blue plimsolls and my classic red trousers. And once again, I would let this dry overnight. And then in the morning, I would do the last amount of detail. And this, this detail would be adding on the Extreme Improv logo onto the t-shirt. And on the overshirt I normally wear, there's like a big dragon and flames and stuff. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Just as you see, I'm adding the Extremes logo onto the hat. Now, the paint I was using here to paint onto the black t-shirt or the black hat, I was using like a metallic shiny pink because pink and yellow is the usual colors of the Extreme Improv Extreme logos. But I found that both the yellow and the pink were coming up pretty translucent, so they required several coats, which again, unless you have the right brush, uh, it may be a little bit fiddly to get the fine detail. You don't want to have to keep going over the same thing over and over again if you can avoid it. Eventually, I used a different yellow, which you'll probably see in a moment, and it worked really well. Uh, I added once, now the good thing is, is that it dries pretty quickly. I was using acrylic paint, 
which means that you can just rotate round and do a different part of the figure and then come back to something if you need to add a second layer so it doesn't take too long overall the hair at the moment on the figure doesn't quite match the colour of my hair and as you can see I now paint it up to be the more darker tone like I actually have so obviously one of the things when I was making this I was thinking oh should I give myself horns or wings or you know something really cool but that just wouldn't look like me so for my next figure I might try doing something really elaborate something fantasy based but this was a nice easy way to do something easy to get into it and also you know there is the ego factor that I'm making my first figure as an extreme improv extreme David Pistansky figure here you can see all of the other figures next to it and I think I seem to fit in well with the rest of them as you can see here is the finished article the David Pistansky Extreme Improv Extremed Funko Pop figure now obviously I've got my hat on a little bit crooked so let's just go what I've gone for there just to give it a little bit more personality is what I was going for of course it's got my classic blue plimsolls on and the red trousers which truthfully I haven't worn in quite some time I've got my flame shirt on but instead of dragons as my actual shirt I've got the Improdigies well the former Improdigies but now Extreme Improv Flames team logo on the back and I've got the Extreme Improv logo on the shirt in pink and then the Extremes logo across the baseball cap. Now as you'll have seen in the video the baseball cap was made out of lots of segments and yeah I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, you can let me know in the comments if you think I did a good job, if you think I captured my likeness. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some more custom figures or like repaints or something else in the future because I really had a good time doing this fun to be totally sketchy and creative see how it compares to the Funko Pop Bret Hart or the Funko Pop Bobblehead Miles Morales now I'd never unboxed this until I was getting this out to do some photos and I didn't realize that Miles Morales here was a bobblehead so that's cool oh one other detail because in extreme improv we have championships belts I have a little custom championship belt that will drape over the shoulder there and of course it won't go away around the waist but it can like be held in his hand so that's cool I would have done one which would have gone around the waist but um, it would have then just covered too much of the extreme improv t-shirt logo and you've got to get the branding in there so I'm quite happy for him to have it rest over his shoulder or you know just be off to the side to show the extreme improv logo so yeah let me know what you thought in the comment section and hopefully enjoyed it um, if you'd like to learn how to funko pop yourself then hopefully this tutorial uh, just as I've been winging it and figuring it out as I go along has been useful for you and of course when I do more in the future I think I'll just learn more and get better with time but I'm pretty happy with this as a first effort so, from me, from Mini Me, this is David Pistansky. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Make sure you smash the subscribe button to youtube.com forward slash extreme improv. And until next time, stay safe, always stay extreme, and bye for now.